Hi, this is Ryan Fiore from VelociVapor.com. Uh, today I'm going to review the Kanger Subox Mini Starter Kit. I received it from a contest that I won from SigBuyers.com and it was actually sponsored by HuffandPuffers.com. So I'll put a link in the description of where you can get it. So opening it up. So with it, you receive the uh, new version of the Subtank Mini, the actual Subox, and then in the bottom you receive all your warranty information as well as your spare parts kit, which comes with a couple of coils, and then your mini screwdriver and post screws. And then you receive some organic cotton, a charger, which I wouldn't use on a device like this because you can actually change the battery out. Uh, I don't prefer charging directly from the actual um, mod itself. You also receive their replaceable coils. One's 0.5 ohms and the other is 1.5 ohms. And for the 0.5 ohm one it says that it recommends between 15 watts and 60 watts. And the 1.5 ohm one it recommends between uh, 10 watts and 26 watts. Um, the only thing that I really liked about the coils uh, they changed them up and they're actually now set up as chimney coils uh, but I still prefer to to build my own so it comes with the rebuildable one in here so the big thing that you'll notice about this one is versus the last version is the actual juice holes on each side are more like set up as their juice holes as opposed to the tiny juice holes that, that were in here before. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that it, you actually have to unscrew the chimney to get at the coil, um, which really doesn't bother me all that much because you're going to have a screwdriver anyway if you're rebuilding coils, but I don't even take it all the way out. And you see I have a coil in here already. Uh, but the reason why they did that is so that when you're not screw or when you're screwing it on uh, the way it was set up before, um, your juice holes wouldn't have aligned with the coil itself. So now doing it this way, your coil is perfectly aligned with the juice holes. So the actual sub box itself can go from all the way up to 50 watts and I have a battery in here now. So it's just a standard five pushes to get it on. So it goes, the only thing that I wasn't a huge fan of on this is that it scrolls pretty slowly um, compared to something like my uh, IPV4, uh, which scrolls very, very quickly. But it, this one goes, to a lower wattage so it doesn't have to scroll as far. Uh, but basically it goes from um, 7 watts and then all the way up to 50 watts. Uh, the lowest you can go on here ohm wise is 0.3 ohms which is what I've pretty much been using it on uh, mostly because I've, I've tried using it with um, the actual one with the sub tank that I have here um, is 0.7 ohms and I'd probably stay anywhere above 0.5 ohms um, personally because it, I've been having some waking problems uh, on lower ohm coils uh, but when I'm using it with my dripper I've got the twisted message dripper I've been going down to 0.3 ohms without any issues with the actual box itself so the box is spring-loaded And it's a nice little device. I mean, the, the back's magnet, which is great, um, which I 
do prefer over like how the IPV uses these little BBs to hold it in place. I found over time they've kind of worn down a little bit and it comes off a lot easier. So I definitely prefer the magnet on here. And if you're using a device like a iStick, uh, which is actually what my wife was using, so she's uh, kidnapped this device for me for a while. But if you're using the the uh, any of the iSticks, uh, I think this is a much better way to go. Uh, but what I'll show you next is how to build a coil um, off of this, or at least how I've been doing it. And Another nice thing about this sub tank is that it's not really using O-rings. It's kind of got like a little um, rubber ring that's built into it or a silicone ring that when you screw in the base, it puts pressure against the ring. So that's what's actually creating your O-ring seal. And I haven't had any leaking off of this. But the coil, I'm not going to rebuild, but it is um, three or four wraps clapped in coil around um, a three millimeter coil jig. But the way I have been wicking this with cotton is if you were let's say rebuilding theirs, that's how I'm re-wicking it with cotton where I'm pulling cotton out of the, the side. So just take your cotton and feed it through the coil. and then clip off some of it. And then I'm gonna feed the cotton through the chimney. and then screw down the chimney. And then I've been using um, tweezers to push the cotton down to the actual juice hole, and then I'm pulling it through. So I'm gonna do the same with the other side. And then I kind of fluff up the inside a little bit and push it back down just to give more wicking area. And then clip off the excess cotton. So I feel like that's giving me more surface area to all the legs, the, the end of the cotton. So it tends to wick a little bit better than how I was doing it before with towards pushing the cotton down um, where you've only got like that tiny small hole worth of surface area that's touching against your juice. So what I'm going to do is put some more juice on it.
then I'm actually going to cut off a little bit more of what's sticking out. So then you just screw your chimney back on. And then you fill up through the top. And then screw it back on. and the juice is touching it a lot better. So when I do it this way, I haven't really had a lot of dry hits off of it. Um, so this one actually comes out to be 0.8 ohms. And it's telling me my battery's too low to fire it, obviously at that high of a wattage. So back to it slowing down very, scrolling very slowly. I've mostly been staying around 20 to 25 watts on the coils made that I'm keeping around 0.5 ohms and it's been working for me. Um, the airflow on it, it's got the completely wide open or it's got a very small pinhole one and then one that's slightly larger. I noticed on the, the pinhole one, I've been getting a lot of whistling, uh, not so much on the slightly larger one. So that's the one I've been using because um, I prefer a stronger flavor over blowing out huge clouds. Um, but overall, I, I do highly recommend this device. Um, this one's gonna be the one that, that my wife's gonna end up using over her eye stick. Uh, the big benefit, like I said, is being able to change the battery out um, with the eye sticks, uh, once your battery starts dying down, uh, you have to throw the whole device out as opposed to this where I can just change the battery out. Or if you're using it a lot and now you, your battery is dead, you can just swap out the battery with another one that you have charged. So it's a great device. It's uh, under $65. And like I said, I'll post a link in um, the description of where you can get it from as well as the link to VelocityPaper.com where you can read more about the review and see some more close-up photos of it. Well, thank you and thanks for watching.